You've seen those crazy clean Roblox GFX profile pictures all over Discord and YouTube. Today I'm going to show you exactly how to make your own from start to finish and make it look just as fire. If you have any problems throughout this video, make sure to join the GFX Runner Discord server, link in the description below. We've got a dedicated support channel there to help you and of course an amazing growing community of GFX artists with feedback and events like different GFX contests, we've got giveaways, we've even got 1v1 battles for prizes and a bunch of other stuff. So make sure to join up, discord.gg slash GFX Rhino, let's get into the video. Starting off in Roblox Studio, we're going to go ahead and grab the avatar we want to use for this profile picture. You can go ahead and pick up the load character plugin that I'll link in the description below. You can just go under the toolbox, under plugins, and then search up load character, install this plugin, type in whichever username you want to use for this GFX, and then click spawn R6. If you want to customize your character a bit, there are plugins for importing your own custom accessories from the Roblox catalog, which you can then just equip to your character. You can change the ID of the pants and the shirt, as well as all the different body colors, so you can customize customize your character exactly how you want it. Before you export him, make sure his position is set to 0, 0,3,0. 0. That'll make him right in the center of the map. Once you have your character, right click on him, export selection, and export him to his own folder. Head to the link in the description below and download the Roblox starter rigs. Inside of Blender, go up to edit, preferences, add-ons, and then under here, we want to click install. Locate the Roblox starter rig zip file you just downloaded, and then click install add-on. Now when you click end on your keyboard, it'll pop up the side end menu where you can then find the starter rig tab under this tab you can choose whichever rig you'd like to use before we choose a rig though we're going to go up to file import wavefront obj locate the obj file you just exported out of roblox studio click it and before importing make sure split by group is enabled then import it and you'll see that you have your character here split into all of its separate body parts you can delete all of his body parts except for the accessories now i'll select my blocky rig and that will import a rig directly onto the character next we're going to attach all of our accessories to the rig i'm going to select both of my head accessories here by holding down shift and selecting the other one then i'm going to shift click on the settings cog of my rig or just any of the bones of the rig make sure it's the last thing you select so then you can go into pose mode select the bone you want to attach it to so in this situation i want to attach it to the head bone right here the neck and i'll do Control p and then bone you see now if i do deselect them and go back into pose mode the accessories are moving along with the head but we still haven't attached this hood here we're going to do the same thing this time we're going to attach the hood to the torso there so now everything is moving along with the rig perfectly just how we want it to but if we go up to material preview mode here, you'll see that our character does not have the texture we want to use. We're going to select the body part of the rig, so then we should get this little material preview tab, or material properties tab. I mean, we can scroll down and under main texture, you want to click this X, click open, locate the file where you exported your character to, and there should be the handle one underscore diff dot PNG, or just your character's texture in general. You can click this option right here to make it preview. Now go to the shading tab at the top of Blender, and what we're going to do is we're going to delete these HD faces here just by selecting them all and then clicking X. Then we'll connect the main color up to the base color there. So now it's just going to be using our default face. The reason we do that is because the starter rig actually does come with a super cool feature where you can choose from a list of awesome high quality HD faces. So you can change the faces directly inside of Blender. I do got a full video covering how to use the starter rigs, a full course that I will link uh, in the corner as well as in the description right now if you do want to learn how to do that and all of the other things you can do with these awesome rigs. But now we have got our rig set up, all of the textures, all of the accessories, and now we can get on to everything else. Next, you want to go to add camera and you want to add in a camera to your scene. Click this little camera view button right here and that'll take you into the camera view where you can then go up to view, navigation, and then do walk navigation right here. That'll let you use your mouse as well as WASD and E and Q and even the scroll wheel to speed up and down and you can then move your camera into a nice position. With your camera selected under the camera properties, you can change the focal length if you want to zoom it out. You can see uh, the lower you make it, the more like dramatic it is. I'm going to do about 30 and what I'm going to do is under under the output properties here, I will change the resolution to 1080 by 1080, just like that. You can change it to lower, uh, you can do 512 by 512, I do recommend doing a pretty high quality though, 1080 by 1080 is good. After moving your camera, you can then select the armature of your rig, like the bones, and then go up to here and change it to pose mode. Here you can then use the move and the rotation tool, and you can use R, X, Y, Z, as well as G, X, Y, Z to move around and rotate and everything, all of the bones of the rig. Those are just the shortcuts though, if you don't want to use R and X and all of these different key binds and things you can just use the tools but as usual i do recommend learning the key binds because it does speed up your process a whole lot more i have a full tutorial covering posing if you do want to know how to do posing a lot better linked in the description as well as up in the corner right now with your camera selected under the camera properties once again you can increase this pass but out thing right here to make the uh the rest of it completely black so you're only previewing what you're actually going to see in the camera
Before we get on to doing lighting, we're going to go under the render properties here. Make sure the render engine is set to cycle. This will just make your renders a whole lot more realistic. Make sure if you do have a GPU, the device is set to GPU compute. Under sampling and under render here, you want to make sure the max samples is set to about 280. You can go up to 512. You can go even down to just 100. This really dictates how long it's going to take to render. And by default, it's set to like 4000 or just way too much that you don't need. And you can copy my denoise settings as well as my noise threshold here if you'd like in the viewport as well but the viewport is just what we see here so it doesn't matter too much anyway also under film you want to make sure transparent is enabled this will make sure the background is transparent when you render it now in render preview you can see sorry for the lag that it is completely dark to add a bit of lighting the first thing we're going to do is go up to add light and then sun set the angle of the sun to 180 and the strength to maybe two or three depending on how bright you want it if you select your character and then go under the material properties and under roughness you can mess around with how glossy or how matte your character is going back to lighting we're going to go add light area light and we're going to then adjust this area light to give your character a bit of a rim light you can scale it you can rotate it you can move it but just put it in a position where it is giving your character a rim light so you can just see what i'm doing here how i am positioning it behind my character you kind of need to decide now what you want your background to be so if you want it to be like a green background i think i'll do a green background for this one if you want to do a red background if you want to do a blue background whatever color background you want to then set this area light to whatever of a color so i think i'll do more of a green i won't go super green though but if we do go into render preview you'll see that there's not much green right now so we will go ahead and increase the power of it and adjust the positioning and everything of it and then keep messing around with how it's positioned and scaled i'm also adding an area light with the shape set to disc and the power pretty low just to give the character some lighting coming from the front which you can see just that slight area light is lighting everything up on the front a little bit more making it all look a little bit nicer and that already looks super cool now click f12 on your keyboard to render it out now you can go ahead and to make your own background if you'd like but for this video i'm just going to head over to gfxrunner.com go under products and i'm going to pick up the pack of 20 completely free roblox gfx profile picture backgrounds i'll link it in the description below you can just come here and click download it'll download the zip file and of course gfx runner is a completely free roblox gfx asset store so if you would like to donate go ahead and choose one of these donation options even 10 robux helps a lot but if you'd like you can also donate through buy me a coffee or ko-fi a huge thanks to everyone who decides to donate once you've downloaded that pack you can right click on it and then do extract all extract it out and then it'll give you this new folder inside of this folder there are all the different backgrounds you can go under view and then do small icons or whichever one probably large icons so we can actually preview them here go ahead and choose whichever one you'd like you can change the colors of them too so don't worry too much about the colors i think for this one i'll just do background seven if you already have photoshop you can just double click on this psd file and it'll open it inside of photoshop but if you don't have photoshop you can go ahead and use the free alternative photo p just by heading over to photop.com and we can drag in this psd here and it will open up the background inside of photo p i'll then go ahead and drag in my render and it's time to make a few adjustments to actually make it fit into the new background the first thing i'll do is go to the change color adjustment layer here if this isn't here for you you can just go into here and add a hue slash saturation select it and then under the properties which inside of photo p i think it's up on the side here somewhere one of these buttons you can then change the color so i can go for more of a green you can also use all of the different other adjustment layers if you would like to adjust it some more now we're going to make our character fit in more you want to right click on it and then do convert to smart object then with it selected we'll go up to filter camera raw filter inside of photo p you do have a whole lot less options here but you should still be able to mess around with it a bit to make it more appealing <laughs> Once you're done, go ahead and click OK, and there's a few more adjustments you need to do to make it fit more. I'll also make it a little bit bigger. We're going to add in a new layer here, and then we're going to hold Alt between the two layers and then click to mask it into our render. If that doesn't work, you can right click and then do Create Clipping Mask. With this new layer selected, we'll also change it to Soft Light, grab our brush, and change this to black. Decrease the flow as well at the top of the screen. Now you just want to come in and make all the shadows a lot darker. This is just some basic shading, which I do have a full tutorial covering shading if you would like to check that out. Then you can change it to a white brush and then just make the brighter parts of it stand out more now i will add one more layer we're not going to clip mask this layer but we will change it to overlay grab whatever color you want to use i'm of course going to use green and making sure the flow is still low you can come in and just blend them in with the green a whole lot more i've also just added another exposure there to make it a bit brighter and now i'm going to double click on my render this is going to open up the layer styles panel where we're going to give it a few different styles the first thing is an outer glow this is just going to make obviously a glow outside of the character i've got mine here set to overlay 
overlay. This is my size and my spread and all my settings if you do want to copy them. I'll also give it an inner shadow. Uh, with this, you can angle it from any direction you'd like. Change the blend mode to linear dodge add and I'll decrease the distance pretty low, not too much, just maybe about 10 and then the size to whatever you'd like. I'm going to stick to about four and then I'm going to change the color to more of a green, but we might go for more of a brighter green. If you'd like, you can also give it an outline by adding in a stroke. We might test if that looks good, but usually I don't think these look too good. Maybe if I change it to overlay, really depends on your scene and your character and everything, but that stroke doesn't look too bad. Maybe without the glow, this is really just messing around with everything until you get something you like. And there we go, I think that definitely is starting to look awesome. There's obviously a bunch more different adjustment layers, different filters and effects, and a bunch of different other layer styles too, if you'd like to mess around with any of those. But for now, I think that's pretty much it. To be honest, I probably could have done a slightly better pose in the thumbnail, as well as what I'll put on screen right now is my final result after changing the posing a bit. But all the effects and everything are pretty much the same. Maybe I changed the color, I'm not really sure what I did to it, but you can see on screen the type of thing you can achieve if you do follow this tutorial well. Once again, if you had any problems or need any support, feedback, anything like that, join the GFX Rhino Discord server, discord.gg slash GFX Rhino. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and comment down below what you thought of this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.